<laughs> All right, anyway. These things get loose, they don't work. It'll take you forever to set it up. After you gotta pick it up and hit unpause. <laughs> All right, anyway, so. You don't mind me borrowing your stump, do you, B? For a minute. All right. So, yeah, let's see. A bracket for that new monitor. Bolts go in about here. Yeah, so we'll cut it to length. So we need to bend another one. I think that's about right. Yeah. And I think if we can't, we shouldn't go any further than that because it's weakening in our arrangement. So, let me make another one here. Right about, let's see, again, enough to cut for length. Tabs, enough to cut for length. Right, right here. You know, that's a good thing I got you to talk to. Because sometimes, sometimes it's like that where the Beatles wrote a song about it. Ooh, it's nice and warm. Beatles wrote a song about it. About somebody finally having enough of their people's crap. You know? Which song was that? Bang, bang, Maxwell's silver hammer. Yeah, so anyway. So, people really should. They really should take uh, uh, that mental illness seriously. A lot of people don't, you know? And, uh... Anyway, glad to report we're doing okay. Anyway, Victor's funny. Uh, he, he played, he, I show him how to play E minor. He played it one more, one finger. Because he got his, he's got Angway Malmsteen fingers. They're like the end, like the, they're like the end of the ball peen hammer, you know? <laughs> anyway. So, you know what chord that is? That is an F sharp diminished. Actually, it's F sharp diminished. Seventh. It's the tonic chord of, uh, of the uh, F sharp locally mode, which is made of. Mode. 
Anyway, classic song. So, one of my favorite classics to play, let me play it in the key of the month, and it goes, so it goes on. with me. My favorite old classic, done in six part harmony, full orchestration. But that simple song, <laughs> you ever hear it played that way before? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, welcome everybody. Music facts for everyone. Say, Jenny says hi to my particular one student out there who knows, Jenny knows my student. She's here, a friend of mine, just for talking for a minute, and I needed to produce this episode, so I figured we'd just sit and talk and make the episode and talk about stuff and about music and about, like, whatever, like, you know, let's talk about <coughs> that, uh, uh, take a little side step off of it music for just a second and talk well it's still music because it has to do with frequency you know it takes a certain amount of frequency around an arc okay to produce an amount of centrifugal force and centrifugal force is how we get artificial gravity anyway so uh, today's uh sunday Classic, right? Happy birthday, <laughs> done in <laughs> full orchestration. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, today's mode, the low green mode, F sharp low green, made, consists of F sharp. Yeah, F sharp, G 
sharp a b c sharp b e f sharp g sharp g sharp low three <laughs> Anyway, so that's enough for this episode of, of uh, right there. Oh, well, no, we're, we're going to show you in paper, on paper later. But for right now, we're going to talk. Oh, did that just stop? No, it didn't stop, did it, Beans? No? Good. I stopped it by accident the other day because of the stupid side button. Anyway, so. I realized to do an artificial gravity research project here on Earth in a large scale, to, to make one in, in, a, in, in a scale like the, well, not identical to the one we'd want to do out in space. The one we'd want to do out in space might be 10 times larger. But I want to do one here on Earth that's at least, I, I want to do that 318 meter diameter which is the 1,000 meter, approximately 1,000 meter. Uh, uh, well, ba basically, it's a 1,000 meter circumference, which is, it ends up being, you know. Yeah. You know, well, it's pi. Divide 1,000 uh, by pi. Anyway, and then you got a diameter. Because diameter times pi equals circumference. So you got a 1,000. Thousand divided by three point one four one. Just move the decimal over. Three hundred and four, three hundred and fourteen point one five nine six feet. I mean meters in diameter. And here, here's the thing. See, where <clears throat> part of the research has to do with with uh, local time dilation, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we want to see what happens to plant life, you know, living on it, you, you know what I'm saying? So the idea was to make a giant greenhouse that spins at a good velocity where everything in, in the outer edges is on the walls, technically in artificial gravity. Where, and basically all the rooms would be set up where they're, you know, where they're cabinated, where, where they're, um, they got flat floors, you know, even though it's round and it's going like this, the floor where you're at is, is flat. So you're, you know, even though you're doing this on earth. Anyway, so it's like, well, you know, I thought, well, what's the easiest, less compli least complicated, most reliable mechanical way to have an object, a big donut, maybe, you know, or a big disc spin yeah. at a high velocity enough to have one gravity on the walls. It's a pretty darn high velocity to be able to get, <laughs> to be able to get to stand this way, you know, Jenny? Mm -hmm. high, pretty high velocity to get to be able to stand this way. So it's like, well, I have this uh, this person I know that has this idea for a greenhouse. He calls it the holistic wheel. And it's a greenhouse that goes around, you know, slowly though. His idea was slowly about two revolutions an hour, like a slow hour hand on the clock. But, um, you know, uh, his idea is the greenhouse goes down. You can take the, take the water out of the tank, get it out of the weather, and so on and so on. But anyway... Um, I borrowed the idea of, because the way his work is put it on a pond. It floats on a pond. You can take water inside it and, or, and take water out into storage in that pond and empty that pond and that greenhouse is out of, out of the weather. It's, it's great for like hurricane areas and stuff. And the, the, the principle, his principle is thinking that, you know, if you go around and, you know, if it's going around, it's distributing the light more evenly through the greenhouse. Anyway. So,
out of tune here. Hear it? So, so the idea came to me, well, why not float it on a pond? Make the pond be such that it's part of the driving force. Of course, it could be driven by, uh, it could be aided, its rotation can be aided by, by uh, um, it could be a giant windmill blade floating on a pond, you know, and then put magnets around it to, to help drive it. And, and to regulate the speed, you use put in a, a load on it, generate electricity from it. To, it's just like a windy day and it's moving around. And you keep it at a steady velocity. That's the whole idea. And have it continually running. So, <coughs> and and have the have the activity going on. So there's people living in the and and there. I'm sure there's some homeless people that that would love to have a place to live. That would. That would be interested in becoming a, a, a subject for research. So the idea is to test the health bed, the, the health effects, the mental health, that all, all that, you know, of of going spinning around and around and around so fast. The thing is, is that by making it such a long, a uh, huge diameter, you get this huge circumference, you know, and say, well, just Say hypothetically, you spin it at one revolution per second. If you're on that outer edge, you're traveling the speed of sound. Because it's a thousand meters. The speed of sound at sea level is a thousand meters a second. Exactly. So, if you're on the outer edge of a thousand meter uh, a disc and the disc is rotating one revolution per second you are traveling the speed of sound but now here's the thing if you're on the same disc and it's rotating the same frequency and you get you climb your ladders and stairs up into the inner area where you get in and out okay your velocity decreases because the frequency stays the same. Where the frequency is constant, velocity decreases because it's, 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 uh, uh, you're traveling less space. You're traveling through less space. Even, uh, yeah. you're going around in a circle here. Okay. Now, see that people, a lot of people get confused. That, you know, if you talk about a vortice, um, you know, and, and you put something in, you know, the coin thing, and it goes in like that, right? And it goes like this, and like this, and like this. Ooh, it's going faster. It's, ooh, it goes faster. They're wrong. It's a higher frequency. The velocity is the same. Okay. All that's happening is that that quarter, which is so many, so many units of circumference, is traveling a lot less space in the same time. So its time curve is different. If you were to put it in a graph, it's like this, where it, it goes in this way. Velocity per time. Okay. Okay. And if you think of velocity as it starts out, comes up to a constant velocity and stays. And if you put a, a another graph representing frequency, the frequency starts up low and goes high, while the velocity rate would would, would remain the same. So you get the initial velocity as it starts down the vertice, or if you give it a kick and help it along. It's initial velocity, velocity in equals velocity out. The frequency is the, get off of me, fly. I told you you're kind. You need to quit that. Get off of me. <laughs> anyway, frequency in versus frequency out is the, uh, uh, the amount of circumference at the bottom when it's going around looking like yeah. it's going so fast. Okay, that circumference. The big circumference divided by the small circumference gives you the ratio of how much how much frequency you're going to get because it's still 
has to do with how fast that coin is going to run them and not to any care of. Now, that, the other people now, people get confused with this one too, you know, and they got the Venturi and the high pressure nozzle on the hose and you put that high pressure nozzle on the hose. Well, no, they, a lot of people get that one right. It does come out faster. Why? It's because there's, it has to do with the volume, area, area volume, because it's all filled up and it's taking all this material in the larger area and squishing it down in the smaller area. And in that case, that has to do with the area is divided by, uh, the large area is divided by the small area. You find that one. Radius squared times pi. Anyway, this is all this conversation is leading up to the space station talk. Back to the space station. So you know, uh, you know what Lagrange orbit three is? That's 180 degrees off from Earth, on the other side of the sun. Get off of me, fly! All right, I can see a few very large space station on Lagrange three. Very large, big, big, huge cylinder going around the sun. Uh, it could rotate, as it rotates for artificial gravity, it could also have a rotational spin this way that matches Earth. So it's got a big window that that the sun comes in every day. Okay. And, and it goes across goes across the space station like it's a, it goes across the whole thing. And it can be piped in through, you know, through, um, um, through uh, reflective optics piped into different areas. So basically you get a night and a day, right? For, for <coughs> and, uh, and you put all your daytime activities near the outer edge, except for when you want to go play in zero gravity, which you can play in the morning and at bedtime and sleep in the zero gravity. So you got the most comfortable bed, right? Right. Yeah. Now, so here's kind of what I want to say about that is there could be because of time dilation there could be some benefits so hypothetically to go out in space and say well say we get we can raise the money people donate and raise the money to do one here on earth right here on the on the ground you know somewhere with a thousand with at least a thousand meter circumference on the outer edge out in space we want to go well, realistically, for first try, would be five times larger, and it could be built up and made larger and larger. It's out in space. You can collect asteroids and meteors, and and, and right on board, it's large enough to have facility for 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 smashing the rocks and obtaining the minerals out of them, and then smelting them and casting things, or rather, someday we'll have printers that can print metals. Change well, it's already. It's like a welder, right? A wire feed welder is all ready. You put it on a print head, right? Jenny? Someday manufacturing is going to be obsolete. The only thing that will ever be manufactured will be big 3D printers to print 3D printers. Uh, it sounds absurd, but it's true. That'll be the only thing to manufacture because everything else will be able to be printed. Everything, even printers. Even 3D printers can be printed. So one big, huge 3D printer to print 3D printers. And then everybody gets a cheap 3D printer and then can print anything they need. Now, big 3D printers, like for printing cars, that would be another story. The way you do that is you go online and you find your car. And the dealer, all the dealer is, is he's got a place, it's got a 3D printer or two, maybe three, so it depends on how much demand he has got to fill. It might take three days to print a whole car, but it would print the glass, the rubber, the steel, the grease, everything that it takes to make that car, including, oh, let me make sure, emphasize, electric motors, printing the electric motors and the windings. Now, how, how wild is that to think about? So it's like you get online, you pick your car, you call your dealership and say, okay, and cars, because they can be printed, they're, they're cheap. Because when they're wore out, they go back to, the, they go to the robots who handle the recycling. See? And they tear it all down, take all the materials, make them back into what they were from the beginning, raw materials, 
and send them back to another 3D printer somewhere to be made into the same freaking car with the same paint job even. Out of the same paint. You understand the, the, the magnitude of what I'm saying? Because this is the future. This is the real future. There's nothing we will ever have that will ever be made at a manufacturer like this phones. It'll be, oh, oh, I want that one. Print it. The businesses will be, oh, providing raw materials. The recycling business will be huge. Because raw materials can come from can come from junk. And and because it they're just being melted down, you know, and recycled. Huh beans. You like that here and there, huh, don't you? Anyway, because they're being melted down and recycled, you get to reuse the materials in perfection and you have minimal loss. Therefore minimal mining of anything. But so then what you get to do is take all the resources that come in our asteroids, meteors, and the space junk, collect up the space junk that's out there, and build the space station. Build, build it in the Lagrange 2, which is different from Lagrange 3. It's off from Earth a ways, far enough away from Earth to, uh, hello, Mr. Police, uh, far, far enough away from Earth not to be affected by Earth's gravity. Okay. Anyway, so it could be built in Lagrange 2 and then flown to Lagrange 3. Why do I say Lagrange 3 for a big, huge orbiting space station? Do you know why? No, you don't. Because that puts you, always puts you three months away from Earth if you're traveling Earth speed. And you can make a hop out towards Mars. You wanted to hit you know, use a gravity boost and get some more speed or whatever off of Mars. You can hop out towards Mars and go faster and get there sooner, going the opposite of Earth's direction. See? see? See how that works if you're here. Right? Here's Earth. Here's Lagrange 3, right? And they're doing this around the sun. Right? Okay? If you take your spaceship, you're having, heading this way, and you take your spaceship and you're doing that and you go off this direction while it's doing this, Watch what happens. So you can count it. One, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Now let's simulate. There's an imaginary Earth, so I can do this with my fingers. So the imaginary Earth here, like this, and we get here's the imaginary Earth. Here's a here's a space station, and you want to leave Earth. Watch, you're like this, right? Yeah. And you leave Earth this way. I was doing that. Boom. And you get there 90 degrees off of, if you're traveling Earth orbit speed, you, you arrive at 90 degrees off of, uh, uh, off of where you started because of the time that it takes to travel in six months, the broad three and, and, and Earth orbit replace each other. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Here, in six months. So if you take off opposite direction, you're going to arrive like that. If you want to go fast, or you want to get there sooner, you hop out around and, you know, hop out in an archaeal orbit, and you can go faster, if you'll skip out away from the sun a little bit and then back to it, and you can arrive in as little as a month. You can go twice, twice the Earth orbit speed. And Earth orbit speed around the sun is not that fast. It's one revolution per second. I mean, one revolution per year. <laughs> Can you imagine a day at one revolution a second? Okay, a year is one second long. Boom! Okay, now it's 19... 2020. Boom! Okay, now it's 2050. Boom! Okay. Uh, that'd be crazy. All right, so you know what? This guy that, 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 uh, that I do stuff for... Uh, because of the guitar that, that he got me from the auction, that, that uh, nice SG, okay? He wants to hear me play. He wants to hear us play. He was told by the neighbor over here that we play like Chet Atkins. And then he wants to hear some Chet Atkins. So it's like, now i got to learn some Chet Atkins. Okay. Well, it don't have to be verbatim, does it?
sharp. Shark. Tonic, super tonic, sub medium, sub dominant, dominant, leading tone. I mean, uh, medium, leading tone, tonic. So, as a review, Friday's was our mixed lydian mode, the tonic chord, and it's an E. And Saturday, Saturdays are always Aeolian. Fridays are always mixed lydian. If you learn the calendar, if you know the calendar, you know music already. It's just a matter of learning the names. So, when we say tonic, tonic means one. So in the case of the F sharp low green, mode, that's the one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like that. Who do you appreciate? One, two, oh, there you go. Two, four, six, eight. Oh, oh, I started on the wrong heat. I started on Monday. All right, here's the Sunday. Two, four, six, eight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Having some fun counting. Counting by two with music. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so anyway, we're going to say goodbye in this episode, I think. Uh, unless you want to talk more about space stations and artificial gravity. Do you think she can talk more about artificial gravity? She does. Sabrina does. Yeah. <laughs> Sabrina wants to talk about artificial gravity. Yeah, artificial gravity. Yeah, she wants to learn about it. All right. So Sabrina wants the uh, wants the uh, uh, on Earth artificial gravity research facility. Come on, don't you? So you need to donate to the Public Space Association. Anyway, just by the way, just to let you know our policy. We we do. And we'll be providing annual reports. Every single penny you donate gets spent on research and development. Huh, Beans? Every single penny. We don't take a dime of it. Do we? Do we? We don't. It, it goes all on R&D, gravity stuff, gravity research and things, artificial gravity research, stuff like this right here. This thing. The little rock in the jar. Okay? See that? Now... Remember this one? Remember this one, um, uh, Jenny? This experiment? You can hear the click when it falls to the bottom. Click. Okay, remember this one? And we timed it. Speed it up so you don't hear it no more. And that's the speed. You can maintain that speed, and it came to about one cycle per second, or one revolution per second. Well, guess what? Well, the way that works out is, as it's at the bottom, I'm going to try to create a frame of reference for you. <laughs> That's hard to do. Okay, so it's starting to jiggle. All right, at, while it's at the bottom, I'm going to speed it up a little. Okay. It's experiencing more gravity than it would because it's vertical. So it's got gravity plus centrifugal force. At the top, it's experiencing about zero, zero G right now as it's starting to flop back and forth in there. It's not falling to the bottom yet. <laughs> anyway, 
So do that horizontally. Count what RPM does it take to stick it to the bottom? It's that simple. And that would be 1G, right? So this stands to reason, isn't it? Intuitive to expect that if you got something hanging in gravity, a plumb bob hanging in gravity, right? It's experiencing <coughs> one gravity straight down, okay? When you start spinning it this way, it, it experiences one gravity towards the end, which is whatever angle of, in, the, in the conical uh, uh, is there from that 90 degrees is the differential ratio of the amount of gravity versus centrifugal force it's experiencing. You understand what I'm saying now? They're differential. So if you spin it fast enough horizontally to get it out here at 90 degrees, like this, okay, you've disconnected from gravity completely, where the, the, horizontal, the vertical pull of gravity has been completely canceled into horizontal pull of centrifugal force. At 45 degrees, it would be 50-50. Does that sound intuitive? And Does that sound correct? It's intuitive to think so, right? Couldn't imagine it being any different. No, we're not. Yeah. Hey, remember these? Check it out. So, the, the, uh, the G-sharp low green mode here is uh, just one step up. There, right, there's the chord right there. Uh, G sharp minor, I mean G sharp diminished. <laughs> Sorry. G sharp diminished, seven, nine, 11, 13. You can make a 15th out of it. Anyway, so that's it for this episode of Music fact for everyone. So today's day is the note of yesterday's Ionian. Is today's Locrian. It always works that way. When you shift it one half step up. Next month. Alright, so here's how we find next month. See, if that this was the first, it's going to be May is 31 days long. Okay, so that'll be the 29th also, because it goes 1, uh, uh, 1, 8, 15, 22, 29. So you come up here, it began here, it's 29, 30, 31. That means next month begins on a Friday. Friday, Mixolydian mode, next month. Anyway, so yeah, we're still working on that edit. We finally rendered it. We finally moved it over to the to the computer that's got the editor we like to use installed. The one next to the couch. Ah. All right. Anyway, we'll see you later. You have a great day. And this is Ronnie. Oh yeah, here, we're not ready. Just one more thing, to make sure. G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp.